Okay, so the situation here is we are given a ring of charge, and we're told that this ring has total charge Q, and there we go, total charge Q, and it's got some sort of radius A. And we're asked to find the electric field at a point here, somewhere um, along the line uh, collinear with the axis. So that's, on the face of it, is kind of a difficult problem. So we need to figure out a way to break this down to, to actually give us some intuition as to how to do it correctly. So instead of examining the whole ring, what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine a differential element of the ring. So I'm going to make this little element right here that I've done in blue. And this is going to be some differential path length uh, ds, differential arc length in this case. And, of course, if I take a little segment out of that, it's going to have some sort of charge dq okay no big deal and that little differential segment is going to produce an electric field at this point it's going to look something like that right so this is going to be de that's my differential electric field uh, produced by my differential path length with differential charge dq and so if I integrate around this ring and pick up every little segment, every dq, and add them all together, um, what I'm going to get is an e, and this de that I've drawn here is just a component of that, if that makes sense. So, um, first thing to do, let's put in some more labels here. We'll call this r, and we'll call this x. I'm just putting the x-axis along the line uh, with the axis of the, of the ring. R is just going to be the separation distance between my source and my point of observation. And if I do that, I can write down the electric field equation pretty easily. My electric field DE, I'm just going to do a magnitude here, equals K, just 1 over 4 pi epsilon, not constant, times the charge, which in this case is DQ, over R squared. Now, just from trigonometry, I can rewrite R squared. It's going to be K dq over x squared plus a squared. Alright? No big deal. Okay, so now I have it in a form that's a little bit easier to see what I'm, I can do with it. As you can imagine, I've got differential elements on both sides. I'm just going to integrate ultimately. But the left-hand side is trivial, but the right-hand side, it might not be obvious. It isn't obvious at this point what we should do. Uh, if I integrate dq from 0 to q, I just get q, and so that doesn't really give us a whole lot of information about what's going on there from the ring as a total. So I'm going to rewrite dq. I'm going to assume that this ring, uh, well, I'm not going to assume, I've been told that it has a uniform charge q. So if it's uniform, that means the charge density is uniform. So I'm going to cast this as a linear charge density. So I'm going to say here is dq is whatever the linear charge density is of my ring, I'm going to call that lambda, times however long my little segment is. In this case, that length is ds. So I took dq here, right? This is the charge that's on that little length. And I figure that I have this little length ds. All I have to do to figure out what dq is is multiply ds by my linear charge density. Of course, the question immediately comes up, what is your linear charge density? Well, we're not given it, but we can calculate it pretty easily. So it's, if, the, if it's uniform, then the linear charge density is uniform everywhere. And so we can find that pretty easily just from its definition. The linear density is defined as total charge over, um, over, to, over unit length. So I can just do that. The total charge on this ring is Q. I should lambda is equal to Q, total charge over total length, in this case 2 pi a, right? It's just the uh, circumference of the circle here. So notice these are all constant terms. Q is constant, 2 pi a is all constant. That means my lambda is uniform, doesn't change, which is uh, consistent with the information that I was given that this is a, a, a uniformly distributed charge. So now, I'm just going to leave this written as lambda as opposed to Q over 2 pi a, just for the sake of brevity. So now I can rewrite my DE substituting in for dq. So I'm going to get k times lambda over x squared plus a squared and this is going to be ds. Now I'm getting closer, right? So the final preparation I need to make here is going to come from symmetry. 
if you notice, I can find a point. I'm going to I'm going to look at my little DQ section. I can find another DS with charge DQ uh, symmetrically opposed to that, right, right here, right. Uh, and you know, if I follow the line of action here, this is going to produce a DE. It looks something like this, and you can probably convince yourself uh, that the Y component of this guy, and or in, I shouldn't say Y component because I'm not using the Y axis here explicitly, but the uh, the vertical components of these two DE vectors are going to cancel, and they're going to do that in pairs all the way around the circle. No matter where I go on this ring, I can find an opposite, an oppositely positioned DS with charge DQ, and if everything is uniform, uh, those vertical components are always going to cancel. So what I'm going to be left with is an, is an electric field vector that looks like this. That's a terrible color to do. Let me get a better one. It's going to look like this, right? And as I sum up these little individual segments, the direction is not going to change. It's going to get longer and longer. But this is, in fact, the X component, DEX. Well, again, just from trigonometry, to get that component, what I'm going to need to do is multiply DE by the cosine of this angle right here. I'll call it theta. And that's actually sitting in front of us, right? The cosine of theta is equal to X over R. Or we can also write it as x over ah, x squared plus a squared root. No big deal. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to make that substitution into this expression here. So I'm going to say that dex is just dE times the cosine of theta. So if I multiply this by this, what I'm going to get is k x lambda over x squared plus a squared and notice I have a full x squared plus a squared here I've got a root of x squared plus a squared here so that's going to get me a three halves and then this whole thing is d s does that make sense? hopefully it does alright now I'm finally in a position to integrate so let me go to a clean page to do this I'll rewrite that expression dex equals k x lambda over x squared plus that's a terrible looking square plus a squared to the three halves ds okay now notice with respect to s every one of these variables is oh, sorry every one of these quantities is not a variable it's a constant that's supposed to be an x there so when I integrate, the left-hand side is trivial. I'm going to get EX equals, I'm going to pull everything here out because it's all constant. X lambda X squared plus A squared 3 halves. And that's going to, integral of DS is just S. This is going to be, I wrote that backwards, S, and that's going to be evaluated. Uh, if you think about it, if anywhere you start on that circle, um, you're starting at zero, and if you, as you go all the way around, you've gone two pi a. So those are the limits of my integration, and what I'm going to come up here with here is k x lambda two pi a over x squared plus a squared to the 3 halves power. Now this quantity here, let me go back one sheet, notice we've defined lambda as q over 2 pi a, so lambda times 2 pi a is just going to get me q. So this whole thing works out to be k times q, there's an x there, over x squared plus a squared 3 halves. Alright, if I need to make this a vector, if I need to make this EX vector, well, I can get the direction from inspection. It's all in the X direction. I would do this, or maybe this, depending on which one you like, or even this, depending on if you like that form, and there's your direction.